99th Division in the Army during three, three, three and a quarter years, 39 months. Wanted to get in, but my dad said, they'll get you soon enough. And sure enough, he was right. The day I got in, a month after the war started, I was drafted. I, I was in, in a movie, actually, and they announced it in Canton, Ohio. That's when I heard about the Pearl Harbor incident. I was first in Camp, Camp, Valley, Camp Van Dorn, Mississippi. And it was a, a new camp. In fact, we were the second group to go in because the first group that had been ahead of us was to, they were they had them making uh, wooden sidewalks from in front of the the huts to keep them getting mud all over, you know. They, had, they were just wooden sidewalks. I don't know if you've seen, ever seen them, but in this camp, every day we were trained with a rifle and bayonet. We thought we were going to uh, Japan, naturally. And, and now you got so tired of it, holding that rifle up. It was terrible. And then we went to, uh, to Louisiana in the swamps. The Allies finally got together and uh, the, uh, I, th I think FDR took over and he decided they're not going to Japan. They're going to win the war in, uh, in Europe first, first. So uh, that, that ended the bayonet training and, the, and all the uh, time in the, in the swamps. We came back to camp. Yes, in Manchester, as a matter of fact where they just had the bombing. That's where we landed. And then, the and then they, so many men were going over there. The island was full of soldiers. Their, theirs and ours, the Brits and the Americans. And then they weren't ready for us. They put us in a church and uh, the church, inside the church, they had beds and they were filled with uh, hay. That's all we had. It was a school in a town nearby, and all the kids would come with their bicycles and put them up in the rack. While they were in school, the soldiers would take the bikes and ride, get to know the town a little bit, you know. And we'd give the kids candy, and they were satisfied with that. <laughs> I know that I was well prepared for it. At that time, they had what they called the uh, land lease. The, the allies would lease each other any, anything they needed. And I, I had a pair of uh, pants from the, from the British Army. And they were really, 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 really uh, warm because they were heavy, I don't know what fabric it was, but it was a heavy, heavy 
one that we had than, than the Americans had. So I had the, those pants on, and I had, for some reason, they, they, above a certain size, it was hard to get. But some of the old, the big, big guys really suffered that you didn't have the proper. I had proper the boots, the, the, the two double tie, you, you know how they are. And then I had the goulash was over that. And the pants that I told you about, and the, I had a uh, jacket and a windbreaker. I, I, I was in three, three maybe, I don't know, three, three major ones. The Battle of the Bulge, of course. Cologne Plain, Remagen, the Ruhr Pocket, Rhineland, and Belgium. No, well, I don't know if I was one of horse or not. If you're, if you're getting fired, fire on, they're all bad. The, the bridge was, was hit several times, and we could hardly get across except you had to be very careful because parts of it were, go were, were gone and you were... I, I, I heard some splash and I thought my buddy was sitting gone, but, but it was only his pack. That was... Uh, he hit the water. So he, was, he was all right. The biggest thing was the big snowfall. Fall they had. It was a record one in in years. And uh, I don't know if any anybody had seen that, that much snow anywhere. But uh, it was such heavy snow that. When people got hit, they couldn't help themselves. And when the war, when that battle was over, and they started, the snow started to melt, and bodies were all over the place. Many of them in, in odd positions. Well, they may have hands raised. And in positions, probably where men tried to help themselves or someone else, but they couldn't because the snow was so heavy. Well, I think we we took fire in several places, and those places were hard to remember which one was worse, but. Any time you took fire, you were scared. See this thing here? Yeah, it's part of our... Uh, we had an association after the war. And we got together, people in that same division, and men from that I didn't know I got to know after the war, and and then they had been in the same area, and they were in the same division. The division is quite a large, large area. He kept things moving. You heard about the the, uh, the encounter on the bridge. You know, you know about that. They're trying. The, the army was trying to get through on the roads like we have today, <laughs> heavy traffic. And he went, he wondered why is the, the column not moving? And here, there's a, there's a guy with 
Maybe we went with a couple of mules. Maybe trying to get over the bridge. I mean, there are narrow bridges to start with. And then Patton just took out his revolver and shot the mules and threw them over the, well, over the bridge and got the truck moving again. That's the kind of guy he was. We knew that the war in, uh, in, uh, in Japan was still on, so we, 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 we knew it wasn't over for us yet. We started to train with, with flamethrowers and things of like that sort that we had never used before. But, but luckily, uh, Truman decided to use a bomb, and, and that ended the whole thing. We knew from stories we heard that they, they were fighters to the death. You know? And of course, well, we didn't have that kind of loyalty, I guess, to, to the Germans. The Germans would give up. When, when, when they knew things were not good, you know. Well, when the war ended, we met the Russians, and uh, they were a high, tumbling group. They, they, they took a blanket, and they wanted to put, put a guy on a blanket and flip him up. Yeah, you know, they wanted to do that with the Americans, and a few of them did. I stay away from that. And then, uh, when we came to the Rhine, you, you reminded me of something. When we came to the Rhine River, there's a, evidently a big, uh, what do you call it, it makes wine. A winery, anyway. And they got, two of our soldiers got a couple of bottles of the, rain, the very best wine that they make. And I said, this is for the 99th division. And the last two guys to go will get the wine. <laughs> I said, there was still quite a few of us, I guess. A single men like I was, they were the first to go in and the last out. It was guys with wives and children went before we did. Of course, they were drafted first. Uh, you know, drafted after, after they're single men. Single men first, always single men, and last, because they didn't have anybody. I had a Dalmatian dog, and that dog, my dad said, we had, we had in, in those days, dogs stayed outside. It wasn't like today, you know, people had dogs all over. And my dad said that the dog was, was acting funny. He'd walk around in his pen, you know. There was about a five foot, four foot fence. And uh, when he saw me coming, he somehow, somehow he, he knew I was coming, and he got he jumped that fence, and I almost knocked me over. I had my bag full of stuff you know, on my shoulder, and he came and jumped on me, and I almost knocked me over. But dogs, why dogs know things like that? I don't know, but it, it happened. Well, it means a great, great deal because you know, you know that we've done your duty as far as you could. 
That's probably the greatest thing that man can go through.